Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I just read The Solar War by John French, and it was pretty cool. I guess the title is a bit of a dead giveaway, but this book tells the story of the Solar War. Basically, the traitor legions have arrived around the Sol system and are fighting their way through Dorne's defenses to get to Holy Terra. A lot of things happen in this book, and we get to see a lot of different characters from both the traitors as well as the loyalists. I won't go over them all, but some of the noteworthy ones are Sigismund, Araman, Abaddon, Dorne and his pals, Perturabo, and Mercedes the Remembrancer. Yes, that is the Remembrancer from the opening trilogy, and yes, she actually has quite a significant part to play in the Solar War. I won't go further into what happens to avoid spoilers, but trust me, it's pretty epic. The best part about this novel is how expertly French handles all of the different characters in this book. There are a lot of different characters here with a wide variety of cultures, opinions and motivation. Yet French manages to do a decent portrayal of all of them while also forming nice interactions between them. Furthermore, he gives all of them some time in the spotlight, which results in an end product in which everyone will enjoy the portrayal of their favorite characters. In other words, I feel like both the traitor and loyalist can read this book without feeling like they're getting sidelined. Altogether, quite an impressive achievement from French. The downside of this approach, conversely, is that the war itself becomes a bit sidelined. This book mostly focuses on the characters and a few points of high importance, while the war is often just presented in a relatively short status update. This doesn't necessarily make this a worse book, but the Solar War is supposed to be the biggest void battle ever and it doesn't really feel like that in this book. This also affects the ending of the book quite a bit. All of the individual character storylines get a decent ending, which are often quite surprising and enjoyable, but the war on the other hand doesn't really have this. In terms of the war itself, the book kinda just gives a heads up at the end that the siege now begins, after which the book just ends. Maybe it's just me, but I expected a little more from the start of the most important battle in Warhammer. The same happens for Mars, which is just casually mentioned as Fallen, after which the book refuses to elaborate and leaves it at that. Again, the fact that the second most important planet in the Imperium is fucked might be worth explaining a little? Regardless, this approach did leave the space needed for the aforementioned characterization, which brings me to something I quite liked, namely the mirroring between Dorn and Perturabo. In the end, the entire war is very much a massive game of 40k between Dorn and Perturabo, which resonated quite well through this book. We get to see the perspectives from both of them, and I found it very nice to see them reacting to each other's action and strategy. Especially great was the part where both sides have a trap hidden from the other, and both Purdy and the loyalists are discussing that things are just going a little bit too smoothly. After which of course the traps are sprung, and things really escalate very fast for either side. One final thing that I'd like to point out, and well, maybe it's a bit obvious, but this book is a bit like that one Marvel movie with Thanos in it. There are a lot of named characters, references and continuing plotlines from all of the other Horus Heresy novels, and they all come together in this book. So because of that, your enjoyment of this book will very much depend on how familiar you are with the other books. Because just like that movie, if you haven't watched the other movies, many of the fight scenes and decision making just won't feel as impactful. All in all, I'm giving this one 4 to 5 planet sized spaceships. The Solar War is a really fun book with a lot of cool and surprising mini plots. The characterization is great and the book also doesn't feel very much one sided. The only real downside is that the book glimpses over the actual war a bit too much and therefore fails to hype up the siege. I think this book probably would have been better as a side book or maybe as the second book of the series because it doesn't really work that well as the first book of the series. Regardless, I still do recommend checking this one out, and I'll probably also check on some other books by John French, as I quite liked them so far. Anyway, that was all I got for you today. As always, have a nice day, the book's linked in the description below, and of course, don't forget your daily prayers to the Runus powers.